David Aho. I am co-founder and investor in Chronicled. That's me on the bottom right. Had a lot more hair back then. <laughs> so Chronicled was originally founded by Ryan Orr and myself in mid-2014. Um, Ryan and I met earlier in 2014. Some mutual friends at Ripple Labs introduced us. And um, he had, he, at the time, he was investing and advising multiple blockchain startups. And I was looking at a number of opportunities. Ryan and I, um, we had come to a very similar investment thesis at approximately the same time. And you know, I think it was because we're both from highly regulated backgrounds. Ryan had previously, uh, previously founded a platform to intermediate ultra um, high-end infrastructure projects and institutional investors. And my day job is in private equity. So I think that's why we both came to the same thesis at the same time, which was that blockchains are an ideal place to be registering and taking custody of assets in the future. But it was going to be the unregulated markets um, that first get traction. Specifically, um, Ryan and I joined together and co-founded Chronicled, which is building and developing a blockchain-based registry for luxury goods and collectibles. Our thesis was that um, you know, blockchains have these ideal characteristics for registering assets, especially if, if you're a startup trying to start a new registry. You can design a blockchain-based registry so that it outlives the life of any company. You can hardwire rules of engagement up front. You can ensure to constituents that their private and their business-critical data um, will remain theirs. They can, they can control it. They can keep dominion over it. And also, critically, for a startup, um, the public and open nature of a blockchain, we believe, reduces incentives um, for the establishment of competing registries down the line. This, this point was very important to us because a lot of the foundational problems that we intend to solve are really only addressed once the registry hits critical mass. So once you do have a global registry in luxury and goods and collectibles, these massive foundational problems can be addressed. These problems are so big that most people don't even notice them. Um, for instance, absolutely nearly perfect counterfeits have pervaded these markets. Um, you know, if, if uh, you know, everyday sellers don't even think about selling secondhand luxury goods, high value secondhand luxury goods on the internet. Because a seller, if they don't have multi-year reputation, there's no way they're going to get a fair price. And a buyer, if they're actually looking for an authentic good, would have to be kind of nuts to go on to a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, buy some high-value luxury good from some entity without reputation. Also, the buyers and sellers that do decide to transact face these very high listing and search frictions. Um, many of you may know about this if you've tried to sell goods online, but you have to remember the name of it. You have to remember the price. You have to type in these long descriptions, take a bunch of pictures. And if you're a buyer, on the flip side, you have to search these peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces filled with tons of unstructured data, you know, poor descriptions, awful pictures. We believe these issues are drastically constraining the size of, of the luxury goods secondhand markets today. And brands have really big problems, too. You know, they spend a few hundred million bucks um, you know, designing and marketing the new Yeezys. And then a few months later, there's millions of kids walking around with fakes on. It defeats the purpose. And also, traditional brands are getting their lunch eaten by new disruptive direct-to-consumer brands that have a direct channel of engagement with every single one of their customers. But the, uh, the issue that Ryan and I realized pretty early on was you know, these problems, they're solved once the registry exists, um, once you have these two-sided network effects. Um, the registry, it's not going to be super useful to a brand uh, unless the consumers know about it and are using it. And on the flip side, it's not going to be super useful to a user unless there's a number of brands on it. 
you don't want to interact with 20 different registries. You're never going to do it. Um, but that's tricky because according to Bain, the markets that we're looking to attack are sized at $1.1 trillion. That's luxury goods, fine art, jewelry. Um, so we had to figure out how, how do we do this as a startup? Um, how do we get into markets this big? And what we knew the answer was that we had to find our niche, a manageably sized niche of hyper-connected users with an acute pain point. Everybody knows Amazon started in books. Legend says that eBay started with Pez dispensers. We, we needed to find our niche. Um, so we spent the second half of 2014, um, met some of these guys at that time, and, and asked for their input. And the original thesis was art. Um, but then we looked at fine wine, luxury handbags, jewelry, firearms, sports memorabilia, watches, all these different verticals with super high fraud issues and lots of friction. Um, but none of them were quite right. You know, the markets were too stodgy, the participants were too staid, and most of them turned over very slowly. But uh, one day in late 2014, we got very lucky. So, you know, ad admittedly, um, some inspiration struck when one of, one of us was walking down the street listening to some music, um, listening to the song 23 by Miley Cyrus. And the whole song is about collectible sneakers. Jays on my feet um, with my Jays on. And we're thinking, you know, this is one vertical we haven't looked at at all. Um, we know that there's this sneakerhead phenomenon out there. We don't know much about it. Um, perhaps this is something that we should look into. And I kid you not, this is how we came about it. Um, so we started looking into it. And luckily, there's a website online, uh, formerly called campless.com. It's like the Nate Silver of sneakers. And it had every single fact you could ever want to know about sneakers. So we were able to get up to speed very quickly. And it turns out it was nearly perfect. Um, there's a $1 billion aftermarket for limited edition collectible sneakers. Um, yeah, it's crazy. There's, there's literally, there's not, there's not a basketball team in America without one or two guys with 50 to 100 sneakers in their closet. Uh, this guy's collection is worth $2 million. bucks. Every one of those sneakers on the right there uh, retail for over 4000 Campless.com has been rebranded StockX.com. You guys can see all the crazy stats for yourself if you'd like. But perhaps more importantly, sneakers turn over ridiculously quickly. Um, so the same day they're up for sale in the primary market, they're for sale on eBay, Flight Club, Instagram. This means that that registry can add value day one. So whereas in art or handbags or watches, you might be waiting for months or years or decades for the registry to add any value, uh, we could add a lot of value day one. This was exactly the kind of demo we were looking for all along. Young kids, hyper-connected. The growth in sneaker trading has actually tracked the growth in Instagram. Um, these kids are interacting with each other on social all day long. Um, you know, this is, this is like the low stakes activity. This is the kind of low stakes activity everybody talks about when you want to launch a new product. And, you know, perhaps the luckiest piece of it all is there's an actually an established, um, there's actually an established culture of tagging and authenticating sneakers in the aftermarket, which allows us to initially go to market completely over the top, direct to the end consumer without any brand buy-in or retailer buy-in. And it turns out the fraud is ridiculously massive. Um, at this point, it's, it's difficult to even transact on eBay. Um, we ran the numbers, we didn't need to, but we ran the numbers and established sellers with multi-year reputation on eBay are getting over 20% more on the exact same sneakers as new sellers on eBay. To give you a little bit of a picture of how bad the problem is, just a quick story on these sneakers. Down here on the left, those are real sneakers. Nike released them on Back to the Future Day. They actually self-lace. Um, pretty fancy technology for sneakers. Nobody had ever done it before. Within two weeks, within two weeks, counterfeit working sneakers were being advertised on Instagram. 
So we had, uh, we had found our niche, our manageably sized niche of hyper-connected users with an acute pain point. So fast forward, one year forward, uh, where we are today, just a quick, brief update on Chronicle before I leave you. We've soft launched our consumer application, which allows someone to download our app, press one button, scan for Chronicle sneakers within the area, uh, tap another button, drop it into their collection, tap another button, transfer it to a sneaker head. The consumer app is seamlessly integrated with hardware that we have developed. They are PKI encrypted BLE and NFC hang tags, uh, 3D printed in San Francisco with our partners. Um, as I alluded to earlier, our very initial go-to-market is our over-the-top strategy. We hired away the two best authenticators in the world. Uh, they now are chronicled employees, and they are going around New York City authenticating and tagging some of the highest value collections in the world, dropping them right into the consumer app. But at the same time, we're signing up business development deals with resellers, marketplaces, retailers, and brands. We're not competitive with anybody in the space. Um, so by the end of the year, these BD deals should bring in tens of thousands of users into the consumer app uh, really without an issue. Uh, our first brand deal actually shipped in December. It was a collaboration between Greats brand, Marshawn Lynch's Beast Mode brand, he's holding it over there on the right, and Chronicled. We uh, tagged 500 ultra limited edition sneakers with our PKI encrypted BLE hang tags that were registered to our Ethereum prototype. That's Chronicled. If any of you happen to be sneakerheads, we'd love to chat with you.